Let's make some vegan vegetarian jollof rice that is so tasty you'd be like, I cannot believe there is no meat or animal protein in here. So previously I dehydrated some red bell peppers or paprika peppers. I removed the seeds and the heads and then I added a little bit of olive oil and some salt and then I placed them in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes just to get the smokiness through and then I turned the oven down to 175 degrees Fahrenheit overnight and there they are dry bone dry so I put a few pieces of these peppers into the blender I've also added two habanero chilies and I've also drizzled in some oil now what you're gonna do is blend it up This now becomes the base, most of the base of our jollof stew. It is sweet and it is smoky. All of those flavor profiles you must have in your jollof rice. So in the pan we're going to cook the jollof in, I pour some olive oil and two cups of thinly sliced shallot onions. Also remember to season to taste with some salt or your bouillon of choice and add your crushed black pepper. What we're gonna do now is cook it until it's caramelized. That should take about 10 minutes. On medium heat, you want to do this slowly and patiently to prevent burning your thinly sliced shallot onions. Next, we add some spices and aromatics. First, we add curry powder, thyme, lemon pepper, oregano, all-purpose seasoning, aniseed, and stir to combine. And the lemon pepper brings us that much needed tang because this recipe is not with tomatoes. Now you want to add your garlic and ginger paste and stir that in, cook for an additional one minute. And now add the paprika and habanero chili blend. Stir it in and cook an additional two minutes. We don't need to prolong the cooking at this point. Why? Because the paprika is dehydrated already. So we don't need to cook the moisture out as we typically would do in a jollof stew. Now you want to add your rice that you have washed. Yes, beautiful people, you must always wash your rice before you cook it so it cooks fluffy. The only way you must enjoy a rice dish like this. Now after the addition of the washed rice, you must toast or cook it until it's dry. And then add your vegetable broth or any broth of your choice. I'm keeping this vegan, so I'm using my vegetable broth. I'm also following up with some water because we need a little more moisture in here to cook the rice. And the key here is to begin with a reasonable amount of moisture to cook the rice because our goal is to get it to cook fluffy. Also taste, and if you need more salt, feel free to season to your preference. The type of rice you're cooking your jollof with is a huge determining factor of how much moisture to use because basmati rice cooks a little different than jasmine rice, okay? So in this case, we've added just enough moisture to be above the rice about two centimeters higher. Then place the lid on, still cooking on medium heat for the next 10 minutes. Then remove the lid and stir it up. You see that we still have quite a bit of moisture in here, but the rice grains are not all the way cooked through. They are still crunchy. So stir it up and then you want to place the lid back on and turn the heat down to the very lowest setting. Also place a parchment paper or a foil or banana leaves, just whatever you can use to trap the steam and cook for the next 20 to 25 minutes. Now you should have some condensation that will form. Gently and carefully remove that. The rice grains are cooked through. They are tender, no crunchiness anywhere, except in the bottom where they ought to be. And they are fluffy as you can see. Ready to serve. We're not missing tomatoes here, but we still have that 
hint of tanginess from the lemon pepper. It is smoky. It has a small amount of sweetness to complement all the savoriness happening here. And see how it's pouring out so freely and easily because it is fluffily cooked. And let me tell you, there's no way you'll forget the best part, the crunchy bottom, the asiejo, the shishin, the kanzo, the ukoko in Swahili, the sakarat in Spain. Yes, scrape it up and crunch on. <laughs> and serve it with some baked chicken. This recipe has already been shared. Thanks for watching, make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is tough time. And here in Anava's Kitchen, tough time is always yes, friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here.